Welcome to our virtual visit on healthy aging as seen through the library's collections. I'm Paul Thierman, Director of the Library at the New York Academy of Medicine. What is healthy aging? As the phrase says, it's both extending life and improving its quality. To live a long and healthy life is everyone's hope and desire. The literature on this topic goes back to ancient times. The great physician of the Roman Empire, Galen, wrote a treatise called Hygiene. He saw aging as a natural process in caring for your body when you were young to help in having a healthy old age. Galen's influence was great. Echoes of it appear in one of the library's oldest books on the subject. This is Henry Wingfield's book, just a few dozen pages, published in London almost 475 years ago in 1551. Its title is long, shortened, it's a short treatise on the preservation of health and its long continuance. About Henry Wingfield, we know nothing other than this book. He offers advice much like what you hear today. Take all things in moderation, get plenty of sleep, have a little wine for your digestion, here are some diets suitable for older people. But not everything is familiar. Wingfield also recommends the golden drink, Arum Potabile, gold dissolved in a liquid, a drink perfected in medieval alchemy. The persistence of shiny gold metal through many and varied chemical experiments suggested that gold was above all durable and that ingesting gold could help extend human life. Let's move up 350 years in time to 1901. These five scrapbooks are among the most remarkable items in our collections. A controversial, larger-than-life British figure, Alexander Myrick Broadley, assembled them from articles, portraits, and photographs in newspapers and magazines. He titled the scrapbooks, Longevity Past and Present, Its Annals and Iconography. Broadley was interested in those who lived happy and productive lives up into their 90s and beyond. Let's look at a few of the people he included. The first volume begins with Moses Montefiore, the great British banker and philanthropist. Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx is named after him because his gift in 1884, in his hundredth year, led to the opening of the first Montefiore Hospital. The third volume begins with two caricatures of Sir Henry Keppel from the British magazine Vanity Fair. The first was in 1876, when Keppel was 66 and just about to be named Admiral of the Fleet, the head of the whole British Navy. The second image is only titled 94, Keppel's age in 1903, labeled beloved of all who know him from his queen on down. Also in the third volume, we find a picture of Spanish singer Manuel Garcia based on his 1906 oil portrait painted when he turned 100. Garcia was the inventor of the first laryngoscope, which he used to look closely at his own vocal cords to improve his singing, and which later found use in medicine. Most of these scrapbooks did not feature famous people, though. By far, the bulk was devoted to those whose claim to fame was just living for a long time. As an example, Jane Scrimshaw. She was born in 1584 in London, and when she supposedly celebrated her 126th birthday in 1710, she was described as, quote, very healthy, end quote. Thank you for joining us. To learn more about the library, check us out online at niam.org library. You'll find information there about our collections and programs and how to schedule a research visit.